other news in this book, which is called Devil in the Milk. In short, it's all due to most of New Zealand's dairy herd being A1 milk producers. I spoke with Keith Woodford earlier and I asked him how he was able to be so unequivocal. I think it was just the totality of the, the evidence. And, and we, we knew that there was very strong correlations between, for example, level of type 1 diabetes, and the same story for heart disease, but let's just look at type 1 diabetes. We, we knew there was very high level of type 1 diabetes wherever we have high levels of what's called A1 beta casein. And type 1 diabetes, remember, that's the one which people get typically when they're young yep. and they have to take insulin injections for the rest of their lives. And it's the big mystery, supposedly, is what causes it. But wherever we have lots of these A1 cows, then we have high levels of, of type 1 diabetes. Right. And then you start digging deeper and you find things like that um, there was a trial where some rodents were given, uh, some were given A1 and some were given A2 and half the ones given A1 got uh, diabetes and none of the ones given A2 did. Right. Uh, we know that there's nasty beta casein morphin 7, the milk devil. We know that there's a peptide string within the pancreas, what's called the GLUT2 molecule, very, very similar to the beta casein morphin 7. And so that gives us the explanation, the aha, now we know why the body's attacking itself. Because with type 1 diabetes, that's what it is. The body is attacking itself. It's friendly fire. It's destroying the cells in the pancreas, which produce the insulin. So somehow the body's getting confused. Yeah. And oh, all of a sudden it just makes sense. Here we've got this nasty peptide, the milk devil, which the body will not like. And now it's getting confused and is attacking itself. Right. Why didn't the dairy industry know about this? Or did they know about it but dispute the science? Or were they cavalier or cynical or what? I think it's a combination of all of those. I think some people have been cynical. Other people have just been ignorant and been convinced by other people. So I would never suggest that people at the top of Fonterra are in any way any part of conspiracy. Right they've believed the information that's been given to them from within their own organization and essentially a lot of that information has been flawed so what i've been trying to say to Fon i've been trying to get fonterra to engage on this for three years mm -hmm. um, some three years ago boyd swinburne who did the report for the new new zealand food safety authority boyd and i wrote a joint letter to andrew ferrier saying we want to come and talk to you about these issues because there's a whole lot of things that are getting confused and uh, the way the Food Safety Authority report has been handled is very, very bad. And there's a whole lot of messages there that you need to be receiving at Fonterra, which you're not getting. But they didn't want to engage with us. And up to several months ago, and I was, I was talking to Andrew Ferry, and I said, Andrew, when are you going to come and talk to me about A2? And he looked at me and he said, well, Keith, you've got to realise that I'm really busy. And even if A2 is a very important issue, I can only afford to spend this much time on it. I've tried to warn their chair, Henry van der Hayden. Henry, you're going to get blindsided on this, but they've had a closed mindset. So we have issues there which relate not necessarily to, you know, conspiracies or anything mm -hmm. like that, but people who may have made mis misjudgments. And I'm a great supporter of Fonterra, and I'm just so disappointed that Fonterra hasn't decided to embrace this a lot earlier on. To treat it as something which was an opportunity rather than a risk, and to treat it as something which would create some short-term problems for them, but the sooner they faced up to it, the better. OK, the obvious question, I guess, is if the science is good here, how easy would it be to have exclusively A2 milk in New Zealand? Can we achieve that? The problem is it's like driving down the highway in first gear. We could do it so much faster, so much better. And the simplest thing would be, let farmers make their own choice, mm. but we need to make the A2 semen readily available. So at the moment, if a farmer wants to use A2 semen, he'll end up having to use a combination of fresh semen and frozen semen. And it would be very easy for LIC, who are the major provider of semen, it would be very easy for them to make the option of there being A2 semen available every day in a fresh state. 
Keith Woodford, author of the book Devil in the Milk. Now, we did approach Fonterra, obviously, in the hope they would respond to Keith Woodford's remarks, but they declined, saying they wanted to read the book. First, we'll keep you informed. After the break.